All right, come on. Let's find out how you can add your jar file or your wall file to a Docker container, basically packaging it up as a Docker container. Okay, so as always, I prepared a small, tiny project for you. It's a simple Spring Boot web application from the Spring Boot initializer homepage. And just to show you what it does, obviously you can also clone the project and try out yourself. But here I'm just starting the application. After a second or so, it boots up on port 8080. And when I now go open up my Firefox, go to localhost 8080, you should see a simple hello world string. Good, that's all it does. But what we are gonna do is package up that demo application into a Docker container. Let's give it a go. First of all, as always, you need a Docker file and you'll just put it inside the root of your project. So create a file called Docker file. Okay, and as always, you know that you need to base your Docker image on another Docker image. And supposedly you want just a plain old Linux with Java installed. And for that, if you're not quite sure, you can as always go to Docker Hub, maybe search for OpenJDK. Here's the official OpenJDK repository and you'll see a couple of tags, the Oracle JDK, for example, or Alpine JDK. And the funny thing is, Alpine is a Linux distribution, which is really small. I think it has around five megabytes or whatever, and supposedly is great together with Docker because it has such a small footprint. So I'll try the uh, 12 Alpine image here. 12, Java 12 isn't even released yet at the time of this recording. But in any case, so I'll just put open JDK here, 12 Alpine. And then there's a Docker command called copy. And just to have a quick look at your project, you know, in your target folder, once you build the project, and you can actually build the project just with a Maven Clean install, a Maven Clean package rather. Wait a second till everything gets compiled. I have to download a couple of dependencies, tests are being run. Right, and now you're done. And uh, once your target directory gets refreshed, you'll see there's a jar file. And that is your application. And uh, you can run your application with uh, java-jar and then just the um, target demo like so. That should boot up the application, just making sure that's what you wanna do. And as you can see, well, it booted up, but it said there's another process listening on 8080, which is the application I just started inside IDEA. But in any case, what you want to do now is say the Docker file is based on OpenJDK 12 Alpine, and now go to the target directory and take the demo.jar file and copy it inside that Docker image. So you're going to write copy target demo, then you can use a placeholder here, .jar and you'll copy to slash demo.jar. That slash is the current work directory that Docker is in. That is usually defined in your image, like in the 12 Alpine image, or you can define it yourself. So you could say the work there is opt something, and then that slash would mean put the demo jar into opt something. Right, so you've got that file here. And then last but not least, you wanna do the same thing that you just did on the command line. So you wanna go call java dash jar and then demo.jar. That's all you wanna do. Great. Now I'll go and uh, have a look at my Tumblr window with administrator rights. And now it's time to build that image. So as you learned in the last episode called docker build, give it a tag, then Marco, I will call the image something like I rock because I like myself so much. And then you can give it even give it a version like 1.0 snapshot. You can also do a, another tag, multiple, give the image multiple tags, I rock and then latest, which is a nice convention in Docker, right? And then dot for that, for this directory. So call it, wait a second, and you'll see that the image got built. That's pretty exciting because now you can go back and just 
make sure that you don't have the application running because you want to run it from the Docker container in a second. Uh, go back to the terminal window. And inside here, you want to call docker run. Then um, in background and print the Docker container ID to the console. Make a port binding 8080 to 8080 localhost. And you want to run the IROC 1.0 snapshot image. Hit OK. Now I got a nice little cryptic error message that I got because I had the wrong DNS settings for Docker configured. Don't worry, uh, you can fix it as I showed in the first episode, clicking settings and going to DNS automatic mode. But now I'll try again. As you can see, the Docker container is running. I just got the container ID here. Let's open up Firefox, go to localhost 8080, and as you can see, the Hello World application is running. Actually, let me call docker container stop because that looks a bit like so. Stop the container, execute the command again, this time don't detach. So we get some log messages in the console, and now you can see, right, the Spring Boot application boots up, and you can see Tomcat started on port 8080. And that is not the application we booted up from inside IntelliJ IDEA, but in fact, it's a Docker container running with our application. So the copy worked, the OpenJDK image worked, the command worked, everything worked. Cool. Congratulations, you now know how to put your jar or WAR file inside a Docker container. And up next, I'm gonna show you a little trick how to use Docker as a build tool. Sounds weird, it is weird, but let's get right after it.